Okay, so that's the premise of Lumen. It is going to be this thing that is a... It's it's already been made, kind of, and now I'm going to try and create a generic system so that anybody who wants to do something that is sort of in the looter shooter genre, your Diablos work for this too, right? Like a Diablo or uh, Destiny, obviously, with, with Light. Maybe you could emulate some of the experiences of like character classes in MOBAs or like character-based battle royale games. Um, that's the idea here. Hero shooter. Yeah, is that what like Apex Legends is considered? Is that a hero shooter? Or is that like Halo? Is Halo a hero shooter? That that genre name isn't familiar to me, but I think I understand the concepts of it. Um Ty says the first thing that he's gonna do with Lumen is making a fantasy hack of it. Yeah, exactly too, right? Like you can make a, a fantasy hack. You can go you can go in that direction, totally. Um the the great irony is that uh, there's not a lot of numbers to actually go up here. Um, there's not a lot of s stats in this system. So it's not a system that is designed to be... You're constantly comparing the numbers of each piece of gear that you get, and if it's going to raise all of your different stats up and down. You're looking for green and red numbers and, uh, you know... The, the arrows pointing up instead of the arrows pointing down sort of thing. That's actually not what's going on here. Um, because if you really want that, just go play the video games. But I want to capture like the, the feel, the essence of those games. And I think a big part of it comes from powers. Which is, again, why I love Spire. God, the, the advances in Spire are the coolest shit in the world. Um, so I, I, wanted cap I wanted to capture stuff like that. Oh yeah, Overwatch. Yes, yes. Overwatch is an excellent example of something that would use that you could use for this, right? Valorant. I haven't played Valorant or Rainbow Six Siege, um, but I feel like I would like them. I've never played them, though. Um, but yes, that's exactly the idea. We have captured the idea in chat. Perfect. Um, okay, so why? Why am I doing this? And we'll go more into like actually designing Lumen and everything. Why am I doing this? Because Outriders came out yesterday, and you know the servers were getting fucked, and so I sat down. And I was like, I could probably just start making some Outrider stuff based off of Lights system and Frame system. And so yeah, like I quickly kind of put together concepts of what I would need to do in Outriders RPG. I made a class, right? Based off, and like if you look at this, it should look a lot like light right it, it looks a lot like light or if you were one of the people who got to see one of the early drafts of frame um it should look a lot like frame actually it looks more like frame than it looks like light um and we'll talk about what that means and and sort of like how that will get captured into a generic version of the the two systems that combines them but it's real easy to do like it's super easy to make things for this game and somebody in my Discord a while back said, Spencer, I love how hackable your games are. And, like, that's exactly what I want. I want my games to be hackable, easy for people to make stuff. Um, so why? Because it's cool, right? And there's, like, a million video games out there. Uh, and I don't want them... <laughs> to be 5e games right like if if a, if a video game is going to make its way to the ttrpg space like let's not make a 5e supplement for that game let's try something else um even though admittedly 5e is a very good combat game um i just don't care for it for a number of reasons and so why not make a system that allows people to to capture these types of games that we all love, that we spend millions and millions of hours in, um, at, at the tabletop. Why Why not? Siege has fewer abilities than others, but it'll work. Also, Remnant. I don't know what Remnant is. Uh, that one's uh, unfamiliar to me. And Halo Reach would uh, work. Oh, yeah, Reach. Reach would be a good example uh, of a hero. Sh okay, so I think I understand what you mean by hero shooter now. Um, yeah, it would totally work. Okay. Cool, cool beans. So that's like the 
the pitch, right? That's just the the quick pitch of of Lumen and what it's going to be. So if you've played Light or read Light, or if you've read Frame, then we need to think about like just like what do we need? What do we need in order to capture this system? We're going to definitely need classes of some kind. Uh, we're going to need enemies. We're going to need some rules about combat. We're going to need stuff about loot. Loot is going to be very important to this whole premise because numbers go up. Um, though it's not necessarily damage numbers on weapons, but it's going to be like tags. And um, I was talking about this on stream the other day when I was talking about like future light stuff. And I think I've mentioned this a number of times. I love a good, tight gameplay loop. I think that needs to be in this as well. I don't know if this system is, uh, is it sandbox friendly? I don't know. Um, probably not, but I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 it's just me. My, my preferences is to make things that are, they're loops that we play into. I love a good loop. That's why I love blades so much. Okay, so we need classes, we need enemies, we need combat, we need loot, we need a, uh, a gameplay loop of some kind. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much everything that you need in it. Um, now, what I my goal here, the goal is to make a system that emulates the looter, shooter, genre, and its friends like the, the the similar system or similar genres in a rules light rpg but the system needs to be um setting agnostic right i'm not going to make this with any assumptions about what genre you are playing in about what setting you want to make your game in so if you want to make the fantasy version right like ty mentioned wanting to do a fantasy hack of it then i don't want to make a bunch of rules that are like okay so here's how you have guns uh because what unless you want to do you know guns in your fantasy i don't want to make that specifically mv is here mv has arrived mv i just basically pitched the basic idea of what this is it's it's me taking light and frame and making them into a generic system so that anybody can take sort of these character based looter shooter style games and translate them into a tabletop role playing game. They, I, and I guess also it, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's going to be an SRD. That's absolutely correct. It's going to be something that just gets out there for free for people to just have and then they can make as much stuff as they want. They can make whatever versions of the game that they want. Lumen is a really good name, and it would be uh, totally unfair for me to not mention that the name comes from Ty, aka Eldritch Mouse, in the chat. Ty came up with the name Lumen. I didn't come up with the name Lumen. Why is it called Lumen, by the way, for the system? Because, uh, because it's based off of uh, the games that Light and Nova are made out of. So Light and Nova are both obviously like in the realm of, of Light and things like that. So uh, Lumen. Lumen became the name, even if even if it doesn't maybe ultimately capture all the genres that will fit. It's just such a good name. It's better than Numbers Go Up. Numbers Go Up is a bad name for an RPG. So I'm glad I'm not calling it Numbers Go Up. <laughs> Um, okay, so here's what we need. Here's here's the basic concept of everything we need to make this game. Let's start with classes, because classes are the most interesting thing, right? It's the character that you choose. Which which character are you going to be? Like in Destiny, you got your three classes, right? Now, each class also has subclasses to it, so you can choose to be, you know, a warlock, but you might be a void warlock when you're playing and you're all about throwing nova bombs and all, all that good stuff 
or um, you know, you could be an arc hunter. And so same thing here. Like that's that's the thing. That's the thing that you get excited about. I'm playing as this character in Overwatch, which makes me different than all of the other characters in Overwatch because I have these two, three, four powers that are mine. Nobody else has them, and that's really cool. You can probably tell that I like stuff like this because that's what Slayers is all about, right? Is This is mine. This is my thing that I do. Nobody else does it. Um, I, I like that. I think that is something that I like. No deep thought there. It's just something that I like. Okay, so a class. Uh, what do we need for classes? The basic premise of this game is that you need three stats or I'm going to call them attributes. I've been calling them attributes in the games, um, which means that there is no skill list. No skill list. Now, ultimately, this is an SRD, and if you want to add skills, you can. But the premise here, the assumption, this, the we're going to assume oops, that we are capable slash amazing characters right destiny you are immortal guardians overwatch you are just like you're the heroes and villains of the world diablo you are these like ch essentially like chosen heroes to go take on the forces of hell you are not some random person which means you don't need to have skills in persuasion and perception and animal <laughs> handling and but you also don't need skills in pistols versus shotguns versus sniper rifles or swords versus axes versus magic. Um, no, we're just going to assume you're amazing at things. So instead of deciding what you can do, uh, can do doesn't matter. How you do it does matter. So that's the premise of Light and Frame and Nova, is that you can do do anything. Come on, you're you're amazing. Uh, yeah, Ty, that, so that what Ty just mentioned in chat lines up well with what I'm saying. Lumen would work well with superhero games too, right? Um, superheroes are superheroes. They could, they could do anything, right? They could do awesome, amazing things. Uh, why... Why care what skill list that they have so that they have slight this superhero has slightly more points in uh you know commanding attention than another one they're, they're superheroes uh, you're gonna listen to a superhero if they tell you to do something um so instead it's how you do things which generally breaks down into three categories um what I'm calling like powerful I'll just use the words from uh from Nova slash frame because I find them to be the best way of thinking about it. Force, flow, and focus. So um so like force is if you want to do anything that is powerful, sweeping, uh highly emotional, uh that sort of stuff. So it's not just like raw strength stuff, but it's like uh, if you're yelling a command at somebody, that's with force, right? Uh, flow is anything that has to do with, like, speed, reflexes, um, opportunity, like, seizing opportunities, and any anything that has you want to do it fast, right? And then focused is the methodical, practiced, almost, like, surgical approach to doing things. And you can then take any scenario that somebody would do something, and you could come up with an example of doing that thing forcefully or with flow or with focus, right? Um, you're going to shoot a gun. Shooting it with force, flow, or focus is going to be a totally different thing. Force is like hip fire filling the room with bullets. Flow is like a draw, like in a duel sort of thing, or like a quick scope and like take somebody down at, a, at like a small fraction of an opportunity as they pass through an open window, right? And you take the shot. Uh, focused is going to be methodical, surgical. You're going to be like waiting. You're the patient sniper waiting a million miles away to take the shot. That's, that's what you have in Lumen. You have those three things 
and it's how you do things. So does that concept make sense? Does that, does that, I feel like with those three, we've pretty much covered everything. Um, I can't think of necessarily a fourth that I feel we're missing. And, you know, three also just happened to work out because I first made light when I was doing this. And light has three elements. And I was like, oh, cool, the elements line up perfectly with this idea. Um, pyre is the force. Uh, Volt is going to be your flow. And, and nether is going to be the focus. It, it just works. Yeah, how do, you, how do you make it then fit in different genres? Uh, so, like, in, in Nova, my Nova Punk exosuit game, uh, I'm, I'm playing around with the idea of doing, like, dawn, day, and dusk as my three. I don't know what that looks like, necessarily. I don't know which one is going to be which, but it's fun coming up with these these triplets and thinking about where they land on these things. Or I might do, like, sun, moon, darkness, or something like that. I, I don't know. I haven't figured that out. But that's the premise. So everybody has these three stats or attributes, and that's how you do things. You have health, right? Um, we assume the, the, the characters can die. I'm not going to put die in, uh, in quotes here because it really kind of depends on how you want to play your game. Um, but there is in some way going to be um, penalties penalties for death. That's going to be a, a thing in the game. So, for example, uh, in light, and I can't type this morning, uh, you gain a dark when you die. In frame, you lost access to a power for the mission. That was the premise. So if you, if you crashed, which was the equivalent of dying in frame, you couldn't use one of your powers for the rest of the mission. Um, that's why we that's why we track health because um final death might not be a thing it might not be a thing in this game uh in video games so rarely is the concept of final death actually on the table unless you're playing um like in a mode of a game like so like there's roguelikes but you're dying and then you come back usually, like in Hades. Um, in Rogue Knight, you technically died and it was the next generation that fought for you. Um, there's also like the concept of... Um, there are some games, like you can play Diablo with permadeath, which is, that's actually how I prefer to play the game, where if you die, it's, it's just game over. Um, but in a, most video games, the concept of a final death is not a thing um it just means you fail the mission or the strike and you got to go do it again i think that's cool um if you want to play a game where your characters can die lumen probably is not the game for you unless with your version of it you decide to make it like that let's see here mv has a question a nova question is there a part of the game where you don't have your powers outside the suit basically uh Oh, in Nova. I don't know. In Nova specifically, there's... Um, I'm bouncing around the ideas of doing like some sort of like downtime community stuff. And so I should just write that in here. Uh, mission versus downtime. I don't know. In Nova, there's probably a section where you are not in your suits. And so you still have the force flow and focus which is like how your character acts in the world i don't think these should necessarily be different than what your exosuits force flow and focus are um but that would represent like how you go talk to people in the world when you're not on a mission if you aren't in the suits i don't know mv i haven't really put too much thought into that so it's a good question it's a good question something to consider i, I don't have a total complete answer for you but hopefully that was Somewhat satisfying to you. Uh, health. So we have health. Um, now this could be modified or boosted. Not necessary though. Um, so let me give you an example. Light, only health. Frame, add shield. 
shields, which was a whole other thing. So you had shields which could absorb the damage that you were taking, and then, um... <laughs> good morning, Brain Trust. Uh, that you, before you even started taking health, and that was to start differentiating the frames from each other, so that you had further distinctions in, in how the, the characters worked. This is not a necessary component to Lumen, but it'll be something written sort of as a think about your characters. How is their ability to survive the mission measured? Um, is it purely just a simple health thing, or do you want it so that it can play into different strengths of the characters? Um, so that's that's that basic premise. Um, Okay, so that's health. And then there is a couple of other things that you need. You need a resource. And uh, what I mean by that is it's spendable to use your powers. So this is something that uh, powers... We'll get to powers in just a second. But in light, it was your light. In frame, it was called energy. Um... And so it's just something that you use to, to make things happen. So, like, for example, here's an Outriders RPG character. The Technomancer has four energy, so four resources that they can spend. Let's just assume that each power costs just one to use. There you go. Yeah, they, can do, they can use up to four powers in a fight um, before they're tapped out. Now, this will be something that needs to be... Um, it, it, it can be gained in the fight. And this is the big change between Light as in its first version and what is going to be Light 2.0. When I wrote Frame, I was much happier with how I did combat after I wrote Frame. Because I added a slightly bit more structure to it, and I added the concept of drops. And drops, I think, are... The money. I think that's the thing that makes this a power fantasy. So drops will just have to be something we talk about here in the combat section, but like I said, uh, this is the, the, the gauge of power fantasy in your game. So for those of you who didn't get a chance to see Frame before it exploded, uh, how Frame worked in terms of combat is every time you killed an enemy, the GM rolled a bunch of dice at the end of that round for every enemy that died, and those dice would generate into either health or energy. And the frames could pick up the health and energy. They could divide it however they wanted amongst the group, which meant they were constantly healing back up and constantly getting their energy back, which meant they could keep using their powers, which meant the game was fucking fun. Uh, they got to just be badass exosuits of war and death. Um, in light right now, as it's written, light is like the, the resource. It's, it's kind of a little stingy, to be honest, in its original writing. It's, it's a gamble to use light, which is a shame because I wrote like a, a couple of other uses that you could use light for other than your powers. Um, like you use it to resurrect yourself, but you could also use it to reroll or to like just shrug off harm. And nobody does that because you want to use it for your powers and you need to save it in case you die. And so you're kind of scared to spend it on the other fun things. So it's really important that you have this resource and that, I, in, in my opinion now, having written two games using the Lumen system, uh, being able to get that resource back quickly is important. I tried to fix this with you know, with the way that strikes work now in light, with wells. Wells are there to replenish health and light and stuff like that to our, our characters between things and fights in strikes. But ultimately, when light 2.0 comes out, that will all be fixed. That will all look much more like how Frame and Nova are written. Okay. We have a health... We have a resource that we're spending and gaining. We got our three attributes. 
which I guess I should I should clarify because if you've never read any of these games, it doesn't make sense what they are. These form uh, d6 dice pools. Um, that, that's the core concept of the game. I guess a thing that we do need is a uh, a core mechanic. <laughs> Yeah, we probably should actually explain the core mechanic of, of the game at some point. Um, yeah, the core mechanic is, it's a D6 dice pool system, so you're going to roll a pool of dice, and you're going to keep the highest die to determine success based off of some, like, success bands. 1 to 2, failure. 3 to 4, success with complication. 5 to 6, total success. Um, I'm not going to write all that out right now. That's We'll get... That's that's quick, quick and dirty and done. But that's that's what these attributes do. So we have a health, we have a resource, we have our attributes that allow us to describe how we are doing things. Um, so now we need we need to eventually get to powers, but we'll get there in a second. There's a couple other things along the way. These are going to be in the optional range. I think. I'm gonna put them I'm gonna put them above because when I write characters, they are listed above the powers. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put them above. But these are optional things for our character classes that we don't necessarily need. Um, so for example, it could be like a melee ability. This is important if you are playing. Really nailing my typing right now. A gun game. If you're playing a gun game. You're going to want some sort of melee ability. People are eventually going to get close to you, and then what do you do? Use gun when they're right up next to you? Sure, maybe, and maybe that requires you to use a particular type of attribute, but like that's the thing in Destiny, is that you each class has a cool melee ability. Uh, in Frame, you didn't have melee abilities. I didn't write melee abilities because you had melee weapons, and there was a whole way that melee weapons worked in combat. So I didn't have this in Frame. Um, but it is in this very fast, quick and dirty Outriders thing that I made, because that's a thing in Outriders is that each of the classes has a cool melee ability. So like here, we've got this concept of the Technomancer. They're all about like freezing and gadgets and long distance and stuff like that. So they deal harm and apply the freeze tag to somebody. What does that mean? I don't know. I haven't written the tags for this game, but that's the premise, right? Um, so a, a melee ability is an optional sort of thing to consider. Um, a passive power or a, a, a perk. I don't even know if these are necessarily two different things. Um, they, I think they might be um, a perk or a class ability. Let me give you examples of what I mean by this. So like a passive power is... Let's go. Let's let's do some examples with, uh, with frame. The frames had passives that th that made them who they were or emphasized their their role. Um, so, for example, one of the frames could change what dropped one drop every time there were drops generated during combat from health to energy they could kind of like change the polarity of the drop and as a result um that emphasized to you the point of that character they they are going to they're semi supportive in that regard they can help decide what the team needs and make sure that at least some of that is happening and that's just a passive thing it's going on all the time they always have that. Um, or uh, a character just simply does more harm when they are doing X. A passive power all the time. Or in the Outriders thing, uh, the passive sort of thing is the... Um, so you see, I have it as a perk, so I don't even know necessarily if it is a passive or a perk. I don't know if I need to break these up into different things, but like... Technomancers deal more harm at far range. That's just a thing in Outriders is that they just do more harm. Then there's also like the concept of a class or a perk ability, which I don't, again don't know if this is different. This feels feels more active. Um, this is the stuff that we see in Light. 
so in light the core concepts are like the witch can heal or boost nearby allies the uh the stalker doesn't and now that i say that it feels more active it's not true that's Im immediately I, I re upon reflect in reflection it's not active these are passive powers uh <laughs> this is passive <laughs> So I think ultimately these things get combined into a single singular idea here. Um, but like the stalker doesn't take harm when they roll a uh, like a semi success. That just can't be the complication because they're they're a hunter they dodge they're a stalker they dodge. Colossi just take less damage, um, and that's passive. That's just kind of always going on. So. Um, this is passive. These are the same thing. I will highlight all of this in the same colors so that I know that it is all the same thing. Um, and then, like, others. What does your game need? For example, in Outriders, a key component to Outriders is that each class heals differently. It's supposed to be a much more aggressive game which is one of the things that I like. I've only played the game for a few hours, but it's one of the things that I like about the game is that um, it's not like a traditional cover shooter where you're just sitting behind cover and just facing off waves of people. You're like just running into the fight constantly because you have healing things that require certain situations. The Technomancer is probably the least active because they just heal like a small percentage of, of damage dealt, but other characters like the trickster that's the one that i really like to play you get a huge amount of healing whenever somebody dies up close to you so you don't want to be behind cover you want to just be running in people's face the whole time so that is something that is necessary in if i wanted to make outriders in using the lumen system outriders requires an interesting healing system based on class, which as a designer, I should then note to myself how this affects drops, because I told you earlier about these things called drops that give you health or energy. Maybe health doesn't drop. Maybe it's just energy. That's something that I have to consider as, as, as somebody who's designing using Lumen is, okay, uh, if I want to lean into this idea that the classes have different healing abilities, then drops might not be necessary for me. Maybe I don't need drops. Maybe um, maybe I, I can just get rid of them entirely, and I can think about how I can mess with this resource thing so that it doesn't require drops. Who knows, right? Who knows? This is an SRD. It's loose. You don't have to use everything in it. You could use one part of it and then scrap everything else. Um, but these are sort of the basics. Okay, uh, so that, that kind of gives you a sense of the, this stuff. And then there's the powers. The fun stuff. This is why you play the game. This is why you choose that class, is because they get to do this stuff. Stuff only they get to do. That's the really important thing, is you want these to be, uh, want these to be unique and badass. You don't want, like, generic, like, swing a sword and hit two people instead of one. I mean, maybe you do, but the point of this is you only get, like, I said, two to four of these. And that's it. Once you go more than that, you're getting too slow. The, the combat, trust me, it will get slow, it will get annoying... When you're thinking about all the different powers you can activate and you're trying to figure out like the best combo and stuff like that, if you're sorting through 10 different powers you can activate at a given time, no, it's boring. It's slow in terms of combat. There's a reason you cannot change your powers in some of these games. You just get these three things and you just think about what's the best way to use these three things. Or to go back to Outriders because it's just so fresh in my head, you learn a bunch of different skills, but you only have three that equipped at a given time. Or in the division, you only have three of them or four of them equipped at a given time. Um, 
now other games like Diablo, you can set up set it up so that you have like a fuck ton of abilities that you're cycling through. And that's why I don't really play Diablo as much because my brain just can't handle having that many powers. So these are the things that are in that two to four power space that you need. Um, and trust me, you will you will be tempted to make more available and that you don't have to do that. And then you have to think about options for this. Um, yeah, Division as a Lumen setting would be interesting, right? I played so much Division back in the day. Really enjoyed it. It's cool. It's fun, right? Um, but, yeah, and you could easily translate it to this. You could totally do it. You could totally, totally do it. Um, so that's something... I'll let somebody else do that one first, maybe, rather than me doing it. Options. Think about it this way. Um, do you want to do, like, static powers? You only get these, uh, and then, like, you advance them, make them better or more powerful with time. This is how frame works. That's how frame worked. Um, or kind of light essentially right light you just these are this is it you chose this subclass these are your powers that is all end of discussion or what i'm going to probably end up doing with light is you can do the a la carte method you choose three powers from a list but you can't have more <laughs> You can't have more than three equipped. Um, three is arbitrary here, by the way. It could be four, it could be two, whatever. You know, however many powers you want to do with your game. Um, but that's that's the concept, right? Is I think that's what I want to do with Light. When I do Light 2.0, that'll be like the biggest change is the way character creation works. You choose, I want to be a witch. Okay, now which of the melee abilities do you want to choose? Which of the passive perks do you want to choose? And then which of the uh, powers do you want to choose? And then maybe, you know, you could always like learn, learn more through advancement. You're still limited to equipped, whatever you have on you. Ooh, Envy's got a question here. I'm wondering about a classless Lumen. What if you could choose any combo of three powers? Yeah, exactly, right? It doesn't have to be uh, class-based too, right? Like, is wouldn't that be interesting as a, as a superhero game? You just choose, like three powers, superpowers that your superhero has. You don't have to say, like, I'm going to be the speedster. And so I can only choose from this list of ten speedster powers, and, like, that's what I get. But instead, you're like, I kind of want to play a little speedster, a little, like, telekinesis, and a little whatever, third thing. You, like a classless superheroes thing like this? That'd be neat. Totally. Why not? Does not having classes break Lumen? I don't know. I My gut says no off the top of my head. I just haven't really played with the idea. But at least just off the top of my head, that feels like it could be a cool thing to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, okay, cool, cool. So what have we, what have we accomplished so far? We've talked about like the basic premise of this. We got this idea of classes, enemies in combat, loot, and we got so much to talk about with Lumen and we're not getting through it today. We're probably going to do just a little bit more just because there's a lot to do and my phone is blowing up. I've got people that need me all of a sudden. And so I, I shouldn't ignore those real life duties as well. Um. So let's talk about the core mechanic. I mean, we should just put that on the page just so that it is here for folks. Um, the core mechanic is it's a dice pool system 
roll the roll pool equal to attribute score keep highest. Uh, one to two, fail. Three to four, success with complication. Five to six, total success. Notice that it's not just six that is total success. I think you see that a lot in some ranges. Like a, a typical range that I see is, uh, and this is how I originally wrote some games. Uh, like Frame had to get updated on this. Um, where it's usually like one to three is a failure, so you have like a fifty percent chance of failure if you're only rolling one dice, uh, and then four to five is success with complication, and six is the only total success. But again, if my emphasis is that you are badasses, you are really capable people, at whatever it is that you're doing, then even with one die, you should have at least a third of a chance of just completely succeeding with no problem. You have a two thirds chance of succeeding even if there is some complication. I think that is much more interesting than half the time you fail with a single die. Um, okay, so that's the, that's the, that's the core mechanic. Uh, the, the one other thing you have to address with the core mechanic, and this is something that I've, I've truly struggled with until I had um, Will Yopst do the editing on frame, is figuring out where powers go with all this. Um, because, the way that I think about it, powers don't need rolls. Not attached to rolls. They are badass. Plus, they cost something already. So, you don't need to roll. When you are using a power, you are not thinking about, am I using this power with force or flow or focus? You are just doing the thing, which is cool. It's pretty awesome. Um, it just costs you. It costs you something to activate it your resource um and so uh, i should say like how do because i don't want it to seem like powers do go with this um they don't need rolls but you you probably want to think about limits in your game do you allow one per turn outside of combat use of powers all kind of depends on what your powers are right but if your power if, if these games are largely designed for, like, combat-type scenarios, like tactical, narrative, fast-moving combat, then um, your powers might not have anything to do with the real world. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, so think about it, right? Think about it, how you want these things, uh, these limits. That's something that will be based off of your own game. Uh, so that's the core mechanic. That's the concept of classes. Enemies, combat, loot. You know what? I think these kind of work well as bundles, like enemies and combat, talking about them together, and then, like, loot. And the... Actually, like, these three work, work really well together as, like, a concept, and then this as its own thing. I think this is good. I think this is a good stopping point. We've been, we've been going for 40, 50 minutes. I, I'm, I'm getting, like, the, the core concepts here. I've introduced what the point of this system is. I'm really excited to do this. I know I said yesterday I was going to do this like AB, AB design thing where today was supposed to be a, a Nova day. But I realized Nova, I should just have like this core of like this core philosophy by writing out Lumen so that I can then build Nova based off of this core philosophy. And then I can go update Light based off of this core philosophy. And then I can go make this Outriders RPG based off of this core philosophy, right? Um, you know, I had somebody reach out to me who was interested in doing a Borderlands version, a hack of Light. And I was like, fuck yeah, go ahead, do it. That's awesome. But hopefully I could make this and that person could could use this. The, then I they have some guidance rather than trying to like pick and choose the things from Light that make sense to them. I, if I could give some guidance. And, and of course, MV mentions a Lumen Jam because MV is <laughs> the master of ceremonies when it comes to jams. Um, wouldn't that be cool? That'd be very cool. All right, I'm, like, so freaking excited about Lumen. And I'm just so happy that Ty gave me a very good name for it. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. So I think, I think this is going to be the thing that I do, like, a lot of work on. Because, um, the light stuff that I'm doing, there's one thing I got to do and send it to MV. 
Um, but otherwise, I'm sort of in the, the waiting period on some stuff. So I'm going to just like make a bunch of cool Lumen stuff uh, rules. So we'll, we'll continue this. We'll continue this again real soon. But thanks so much, everybody, for, for stopping by and, and chatting and, and talking about this stuff. And I, I really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your contributions. Have yourselves a wonderful rest of the day, evening, morning, wherever you are. And uh, I will see you all soon. Have, have, a, have a good one.